please explain what is a woman really supposed to do or say in reference to the ministry? Is a woman allowed to preach, for example? Shaul is, uh, is dealing with this particular situation here. And I'll, I'll have to uh, draw it from memory because he says, I uh, suffer, or uh, that's King James, I suffer not uh, a, a woman to, uh, to uh, teach. Uh, uh, but, but the word teach is the same word that's used for debate, debate, or usurp authority over the man. Now, first of all, you know, uh, uh, when it speaks of the man, when it's a definite article V, you have to say, you know, what is it defining? Because it is pointing the definite article V, that, or this is, is a definite article that points at the object, clearly defining it. And so what is it clearly defining? It is speaking of her husband, her man, the man that she is to be subject under, the one that her desire is to, and that he is the head of the house. And a woman in the body of believers in the assembly is to not to debate with her husband, not to argue with her husband uh, publicly. It's not that she can't open her mouth. It, you know, a, a woman's authority is made whole, as he goes on to say, in childbearing, in child rearing. You know, and, and all the men know out there that when our, our wives tell us, you know, this is what, what needs to happen with these children, you know, it's like, Thank you, sweetheart. If you know, uh, you know, let me know if they need a spanking or whatever. But you know, a woman's authority in really understanding and nurturing the children—that's where it's all. Uh, that's where her authority is full and is complete, and she does not usurp authority over her husband. She does not debate and debase her husband publicly. She is to honor and respect her husband. If a woman does not honor and respect her husband, then we see what happened to Vashti. I mean, she had it all, unlimited expense account. She had everything she could ever desire, but yet when her husband asked her at the culmination of a six month world fair to come in with the royal crown on, she refused him. And so she was put out because of that very thing. Uh, oh, a man is to love his wife. That's a commandment. It's, it's not a feeling, it's, it's action. It's what you do. You love your wife. As Messiah loved the, the body of believers, the assembly, okay? But women are to respect their husbands. And there is no man that's higher than, than their husband. The preacher, the pastor is not the authority in that family. The man is the head of that house. And he can be wrong. As the saying goes, you know, if a man speaks in the wilderness and there's no woman around to hear him, is he still wrong? Well, you know, <laughs> she's not wrong publicly, all right? She doesn't debate with him publicly. Now, I'll give you an example. Joyce Myers, which I call her the Marine Corps Drill Sergeant of women uh, of, uh, uh, of evangelism, okay? The women Marine Corps Drill Sergeant. I, I, I think she's wonderful. You know, she, uh, and I'm not saying anything new, she was a abused woman, a very abused woman. And because of the things she suffered in life, she can minister to other women like nobody else can. No man can, has ever walked in her shoes. Now, does she usurp authority over her husband? No. She's the one on the stage, but she is under his authority. And so things in order, you know, can a woman preach? Can a woman teach? Yeah, as long as she's not usurping authority over her husband, women have a lot of good things to do and a lot of great things to say. My daughters write books. And it's mainly for families and for children because that's where their authority is complete. They're no longer under my covering, they're under their husband's covering. And thankfully, I've got sons-in-law who are better at it than I am. All right. <laughs>